Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in with Dr. Leisha the Preacher. And so I'm coming to you with my diary entry number 10. And my diary entries from high school, these are high school diary entries. They're becoming more um, in-depth, you know, the topics are becoming more meaty, you know, so. And yes, my cheek and lip and everything is all swollen, but I still want to read these entries anyway. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so this one is entitled Decreasing the Abuse of Welfare. Wow. 16 years old, okay? But you have to keep in mind, I was a different kind of 16-year-old. I had been working in a pharmacy for three years already filling prescriptions and and doing everything that the pharmacist does, except for I wasn't allowed to mix, um, uh, mix chemicals. I couldn't mix anything. But other than that, I did everything else, you know, on the computer, you know, everything. Interacting with customers, so. And a part of that process was waiting on customers that were on welfare. Girls my age with babies, I saw them come in, you know. I served them. I gave them and their children uh, their medications, you know. So I kind of knew what I was talking about a little bit, you know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't remember what I wrote in here, of course, <laughs> but let's see. Welfare recipients has it made. I was 16. They do not have to pay any medical co-pays or deductibles. Okay. That is having it made when you don't have to pay co-pays and deductibles. <laughs> That's having it made. <laughs> Their housing is paid for. They do not have to do anything but sit back and relax, letting the government take care of them. I was 16, guys. <sighs> Every recipient doesn't take on this attitude because maybe they had a little bad luck and needed temporary assistance. Ooh, I'm glad I rescued myself. That okay. Every recipient does not take on this attitude. Okay, good. Well, I have doesn't take on this attitude because maybe they had a little bad luck and needed temporary assistance. Okay. Whew. Save myself there because I was getting concerned. Why would I be so harsh at 16? Come on. <laughs> I'm not that harsh now. <laughs> and then, um, next paragraph. The families who have been raised on welfare for generations and generations should have rules that will decrease the abused system. Okay. A rule that will work, in my view, is that when a woman applies for assistance, she should only be granted assistance for herself and whomever she claims. Okay. As in children, parents, etc. Oh, wow. So I acknowledge that, you know... Families can include more than just your children. You may be taking care of your parents, too. Okay. After that, any child or whomever will not be assisted through her coverage. Okay. 
In other words, ooh, I was deep. In other words, <laughs> any other child she has is her responsibility. The way the system is now, a woman can have 500 <laughs> children, 500 children. <laughs> After her assistance ex except exception acceptance, okay, they will add them to her coverage. That is only encouraging the woman to have more children for more money and creating more generations of welfare recipients. Well, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> I said it all. Um, the only thing I would change is um, it just depends on the woman's situation. You know, whether or not her coverage will include additional people after she applies. Um, wow. This is pretty deep and it says what it says and Sixteen years old, writing like that. But again, I think I had additional knowledge because I worked at the drugstore. Yeah, my mom uh, worked, you know, so I didn't know from experience. But working at the drugstore at 13 years old, um, up until this point where I was 16, I had enough experience professionally, <laughs> professionally <laughs> to make such a um, a statement. This is a, a pretty bold statement for a 16 year old. Um, and I do, I guess I feel the same way, I guess. Yeah, I, I kind of do, except for, you know, adding additional people, children, on her coverage. I know, I like how I pointed out on her coverage, you know, after she applies. There are, I think I would modify that part. Um, I'm glad I pointed out that everyone doesn't take that attitude of generational um, welfare um, dependency, you know. Granted, you know, you have people who are disabled at any age and requires um, lifetime assistance. That's different. There are so many exceptions. But to end the generational abuse of welfare, and I, don't, I wouldn't even use the word abuse anymore. I would just say dependency. Because, you know, let's keep it real. Um, you can't abuse something that you have only known. I mean, it's your only real option. It's only been your really only real option for generations. You can't abuse something that you, you can't abuse. It's kind of like abusing water. How do you abuse water? Yeah, you can drink too much. Maybe you can shower more than you need. You can use water 
excessively, but you can't abuse water. It's a, it's a natural necessity. So eating, having shelter, that's a necessity. You can't abuse necessity. Can you have too much food? Yes. But you can't abuse food because it's a necessity. It's a basic need. So, in my opinion, I would change the title to say decreasing the dependency of welfare. Because I don't believe you can abuse basic necessities. I believe basic necessities is a, 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 a God-given right. It's our birthright. Just the fact that we're born, we have the right to basic necessities just to be here. But the laws of the land operate in a way that Unless you work, you don't eat. But I think when it comes to women and children, there an, ex an exception needs to be made. And I don't think that we have the option to abuse basic necessities, no. Can you abuse luxury? Yeah. But... Housing for children and women and children is not an abusive system at all. It's a basic needs system. But what we need to focus on is how to rise above the basic needs level. How can we prosper? How can we pull welfare recipients up to better circumstances? That should be the focus. Not bashing recipients for the need to eat and live. No. For education. You know? A public life. Basically, that's what it is. Public assistance means you're, you're living life at the public level. You know, if you want to live at the private level, you're going to have to change what you're doing. You're going to have to take advantage of the programs that are also in place to help people to rise above the basic needs level. Well, I'm going to stop rambling. <laughs> Thank you for listening. And... Um, Wow, that was a, you know, a, a worthwhile, worthy topic with Dr. Leisha Preacher.